Nice to meet you. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about the film and how it came about? I don't even know if this is working. Yes, it is working, but you have to put it very close. Uh, yeah, it's probably the first thing we wrote, actually. Uh, certainly not the first thing we shot. It's a bit of a concept film, just sort of like an idea. It's a bit of a, a bigger story behind it, really. And it's sort of, we'll just get this shot, sort of like a five minute, well, seven and a half minute snap or something that could be a, a lot longer, really. When did you shoot it? Exactly a year ago, actually. Yeah, it's taken quite a long time to sort of post-produce. Because uh, we shot it zero budget whatsoever on a, like a crappy little 500 pound camcorder, uh, no sound, no lighting. Uh, so we had Holly Wyatt do the sound. She did a fantastic job on sort of saving some of the sort of sound, which was great. And uh, Nads did the music, who I believe is over there. Uh, he did a really good job on that as well. So uh, that's all I brought it out from quite a bit from what it was when we first sort of like edited it and everything. So what you did the first cut and then you brought it to those to them guys to, to do the post on sound, is that right? That's correct, yes. And what about the writing process? When when did you write it and, and what was what was it written for specifically? Was it always going to be a short film or something? Um, well no not really. Um, when I came up with the idea it was more of a uh, the short film was more of a prelude to sort of a feature film. So um, when I got the idea you know I knew Paul and I did and they'd done a bit of video editing, you know, off and on. So I had this idea, I sort of presented it to them and said, you know, is this conducive to film? And they sort of agreed, and within a couple of months, we drafted up a rough script. And then we obviously put it on hold for a little time, and then went back to it after we'd done a few, you know, like, short films. And, right. and then it's, I think it's paid off, you know, because um, when you get time to look at something, you can, see where it needs tightening up. So we went to um, we went to shoot it on I think it was November last year and then and then the rest of it has been in post. So and the idea behind it was kind of like this man was sort of stuck in a loop for all the bad things he'd done, you know, due to being a hitman. So he was kind of trying to unpick his life in the, in that short seven minutes. So really we don't really get enough time to Is that a circular thing? Is he kind of the same guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we didn't really get time to, obviously, in a short, to sort of look at the character and do a bit of character study. So we just kind of had to um, sort of leave it open for the audience's and, you know, interpretation. Right. So we did the effects on the stuff on the film? Um, well, we, um, a guy we know for a friend called, called um, Gregson Effects Studio, Manchester based, he uh, gave us a bit of um, advice to do with the, you know, the burn effect after right. the briefcase explodes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then we kind of did it ourselves. And um, I think Paul did a lot of the post, post visual effects as well. But this isn't the first film that you've made, is it? No. 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 So, kind of, could you just tell us a little bit about your background as well, collectively? Uh, the first film we made was called Dead Search, which was about two years ago, I think, now actually. Uh, about a guy who Googles himself and finds his obituary online. Uh, that was about five minutes long. We've done a couple of little silly short films for Philmonic. Right. Uh, a couple of them about Killer Gnome uh, with Chris Lane, who probably most people have heard of. Uh, and another one at Christmas we did about uh, sort of a, a bit of a idiotic Santa Claus. Uh, but we sort of decided this was sort of like a more, I say, concept film, a bit sort of uh, heavier. And we want to get go more in that direction and do sort of like a bit more serious stuff and a bit longer stuff certainly next up uh, than sort of like the really short stuff that we've been doing before and so kind of like the, the premise of like a Bolton hitman <laughs> <laughs> it's the second time I've come across this premise is there a lot of hits in Bolton that you don't know uh, well apparently it's one of the highest uh, places in the country for insurance for cars and things so right. there's certainly a lot of theft in the area I don't know about hitman though <laughs> So uh, what's the plan uh, for the future for you, you guys going forward? I mean, I know that I've seen your name around before, but kind of like, uh, you know, probably perhaps it's a Philmonic thing. Um, Possibly. Uh, I know a few people, quite a few of the people on the, the circuit around sort of the area and whatever. Uh, we've got a short that we actually shot nearly a year ago again, uh, but we need some pickup shots on, and we decided to shoot it on like the brightest, sunniest day of the year last year. Found out we needed some pickup shots, and well, yeah, it's been raining ever since. Uh, so that's got to wait until summer this year. That's actually a script by Dean and Ray uh, called Time to Kill. Uh, that's sort of like 
absolutely 90% done. It just needs a few pickup shots on it. Right. And we're in the process of writing sort of sci-fi, psychological kind of thing that we've no idea quite how we're going to make it yet. Uh, that will be probably anything between 15 and 30 minutes long. That's what we want to try and work on this year, really. Did you study film? It's kind of like it's no, it's not at all. So it's more of a kind of thing that you do in your spare time? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 More of a hobby. Yeah. Okay, and so kind of like you said you shot it on a uh, like a hand, you know, a little hand uh, video. Yeah, a little Canon HD uh, HF 10 or something it was, like 400, 500 quid thing from Argos. Was that a deliberate choice or? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, we've got a DSLR and a couple of other cameras now because uh, I sort of do it as kind of hobby stroke freelance-ish kind of stuff, so I've actually bought some proper equipment now, mm. uh, but it was a monetary choice, really. right. but, but we then, didn't have any. Well, obviously, getting out there, you may go and make the film, I mean, what kind of the things did, did you, you see you got from that? And also the process as well, because you've actually done it in a, a quite professional way, <laughs> inadvertently, by doing the sound afterwards, which often happens in pro films, mm. so uh, what did you learn from this specific film, and what would you do differently? Uh, planning. Uh, we didn't really plan this at all in terms of shot lists, storyboards or anything like that. Uh, that's probably a bad idea uh, if you're trying to do anything sort of more serious uh, because you can get lost and when you come to edit it uh, you sort of go, ah we needed a shot there to sort of transition from this scene to another scene that you just didn't think of. Uh, so sort of no, a few films that we shot since that, we've done a lot more planning, storyboards, shot lists and things like that. Yeah. And they've sort of come out a lot better, or we felt they've come out a bit better in terms of the process anyway. Great. Uh, has anybody from the audience got a question for, uh, for the guy? Come on. <laughs> I like no questions. <laughs> you want a quick escape? <laughs> Yeah, no questions from before? Yes, Phil. Uh, the sci-fi action film, um, do you have any ideas for that? Um, how, do you kind of, how, are you, how are you planning on making it? Because sci-fi is quite hard to, um, drama to kind of say do great. So I guess I'm going to kind of, do you have any ideas for it yet? Or is it still very preliminary development? I would say, yeah, we've sort of, rough draft, we've got a rough draft. We've got like a mind map and everything <coughs> for it. Uh, we're keeping it relatively simple as in sort of one location, sort of two actors uh, and we're just going to make it look like some kind of derelict abandoned sort of spaceship or something like that where we can just get away with bubble wrap sprayed and some wires and things like that uh, rather than anything more extravagant uh, but yeah we've got quite a few sort of it's coming along that but Again, it probably take quite a long time to get going because we do want it to look right, rather than a 1960s Doctor Who set. <laughs> well, so, what about the locations for the city? Where was it shot, and you know, how did you source your location? Uh, the house was my friend's house in Bolton. The Theralit one? Uh, no, <laughs> not the Theralit <laughs> <laughs> one. <laughs> Uh, the derelict building was actually Gisborne Forest, uh, which is off near Lancashire Yorkshire border. Uh, that my brother actually went cycling around there, and I was looking for sort of like an abandoned location. He said, "Oh, I'm sure I cycled past one." Completely didn't know where it was, and spent about two days trying to find it on Google Maps. Right. Uh, With the crew in <laughs> And we found it, and then I spent uh, literally a whole day driving around trying to find it. It was not an easy place to find. Uh, it's about, about 40 miles north of Bolton at least. But uh, it's a really, really good location. If you're looking for any, anywhere out of the way and sort of abandoned, it, apart from the odd cyclist who goes past, it is dead. Completely and utterly, no one there whatsoever. Have you screened at Kino before, Bernard? Uh, no, it was first, yeah, time. first time. I'm sure we'll see more of your films in the Definitely future. Hopefully, hopefully see some of that bubble wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.